RXLM and XRP securities. In this video, I'm going to ask you the tough questions that's going to make you think real closely here about that statement. We also have the LBRY case, which is going to provide us some insight in what the SEC and the courts are looking at in order to determine securities. It's time to expose you to the truth. Coinbase is in deep financial trouble. I did a deep dive. I'll have that linked at the end. Ethereum is melting down because the FTX hacker is dumping ETH on the open market. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about securities laws, everyone, and what it means. All right. Takeaways from the SEC versus LBRY Inc. on what constitutes a security. The Howey Test, which the Supreme Court of the United States laid out in this well-known precedent, contains three prongs that make an investment contract. I'm going to ask you a few questions and you better answer honestly. Number one, an investment of money. Did you invest in XRP and XLM? Number two, in a common enterprise. Number three, with reasonable expectation of profits derived solely from the effort of others. So did you buy XLM and XRP? Are you sitting on the sidelines doing nothing, hoping that in two years, five years, 10 years, it's worth more money? Uh, oh, everyone, I think we have to start asking ourselves some really tough questions here about securities law. Let's go on even further. Some key takeaways from the court application of the Howey to the digital assets include this. Mere utility will not suffice to prevent a token from becoming a security. That applies more to XLM than it does to XRP because remember, XLM is the ticket to use the Stellar chain. If a token offers the potential for speculation and at least a significant portion of the purchaser activity involved in the token serve investment purposes, sales of such tokens by its creator may be considered securities actions. And again, how many of you out there have bought XRP and XLM with the hope that it will go up? I would assure you that most of the viewers of this channel are not utility users of XRP or XLM. A really good example of utility on Ripple's side would be someone who uses XRP for ODL purposes, like a payment corridor. Now, on the Stellar side, think of someone who buys NFTs, right? They're into the NFT market on Stellar. They're not buying XLM in order to make money. No, they're transferring their fiat into Lumen so that they can buy NFTs. Now remember, I'm bullish on both, but I'm trying to get you out there to think without the emotion and get into the facts. Statements touting the growth or potential or actual growth of the token's value, whether email, blog post, social media, I think we're pretty good there. Both companies do a good job on that. And the bottom one, disclaimers may not override the objective of economic realities of the transaction, but I have even more for you. And why? I'm going to ask you a few questions, and this has to do with securities versus commodities, okay? Because remember, that's what this is all about. All right, so now let's start talking security versus commodity and why this designation is so important. And again, let's remove the hopium, let's remove all the emotion, let's talk facts, everyone. All right, so for a commodity, a commodity is something like gold. It's there, it exists. Does gold have a board of directors? No, gold is just sold on different markets across the world. Does gold have a centralized authority that issues it? No, that is not true. Miners can harvest gold in various ways and forms and again, sell it on the open market. Now, ask yourself this. Does Ripple Labs have a board of directors that we can easily identify? Well, yeah, we do. Why is that important? Because a board of directors can do what they want with the token, can't they, right? This applies to both XLM and XRP. There is no board of directors on gold, is there, everyone? Gold just happens. That's why it's a commodity. Now, let's take things even further. Now, let's talk about centralization and decentralization you know, commodity security. We're going to start tying them together. Who is the main controller of XRP and XLM out there? Hold on. Yep, that's right. It's going to be Ripple Labs and Stellar Development Foundation. And remember, I love both, but I'm not a moron and I am paying attention to the law and applicable law. So here we go. You now have most of the supply of XRP and XLM held by those two entities, correct? Who holds the supply of gold? It's spread all over the damn place. Also, who is dumping gold on the open market? Well, it could be anywhere from miners from here, 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 all over the place. Miners in Colorado, Alaska, Africa, Asia, you name it. 
who is putting XLM and XRP on the open market? Well, it's directly Ripple Labs as well as Stellar Development Foundation. So there is a centralized issuance of that asset. Gold does not have a centralized issuance. Commodities like gold don't have that. Again, it's the same thing with oil. Oil is produced in the Middle East. Oil is produced in Alaska. Oil is produced in the Permian Basin. Oil is produced in Russia. Oil is produced in the Arctic Circle. It's produced all over the place. There is no central entity to it. And again, now we go back to the Howey test and I start asking even tougher questions. You bought XRP and XLM with the hopes it went up. Trust me, I read the comments. I see that falls under the Howey test. One of the other big things that the government has been hitting out there, securities versus commodities, is the validator suggesting that Bitcoin out there is the only one that falls under commodities because of how the validators, right? How the whole system works. Think, how do you validate the whole Bitcoin action? right? It's miners from all over the place validated. Most of these companies, Stellar and XRP, do not have as many nodes, as many validators as Bitcoin, which makes them more centralized in the development of their blocks. Again, all of these things out there, we have to keep in mind as we go forward. We have to be realistic with our expectations. Stop popping the hopium unless you drop the H and get realistic with what's happening when it comes to securities versus commodities. And remember, the big things out there are this, who controls gold? And there really isn't anyone, it's the market that controls gold. Who controls XRP? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's Ripple Labs. They can dump as much on the market as they want. Even if they have outlines, they can still do it. They control almost half of the supply. This is the first time ever that they've controlled less than half. Same thing with Stellar Development Foundation. They control the supply of lumens. They dump it on the open market. See, everyone? We really have to start digging deeper and stop following all the hype out there and get more informed on what's going on on now i broke two nasty videos for you the first one is this coinbase deep dive you will never get a deeper dive than this watch that video if you're interested in coinbase or if you're interested in hardcore finance this one right here this has to do with the hacker dumping eth on the open market and how it's affecting the price of xlm and xrp thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day